go. All right, I think, I think we're good. Yay. Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Zapata here. Um, I am um, doing another virtual wellness happy hour. Uh, for those of you who did not catch our last one, um, we pretty much uh, have always been used to doing wellness happy hours at apartment buildings that are pretty close to the office. And with the stay home, stay safe order, um, we're not, no one's leaving their house. So um, we decided to move these wellness happy hours into this virtual space so that we could still get people um, connected with different healthcare professionals. And I'm super excited this evening to be joined by, um, or joined with uh, Christy Goff. She is a registered dietitian with PacMed. So Christy, thank you for joining Hi. us. Hi, yes, no problem. Um, now, can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure, so I'm a registered dietitian with Pacific Medical Center and I run an employee wellness program as well as a community wellness program. So what that means is I go into companies and teach classes around nutrition. And this year I started a yoga program too as well. So com combining nutrition and yoga and mindfulness are some of my passions. And it's been great to work with Emerald City Spinal Care for the last couple of years doing happy hours and education. Yeah, it's been a really, really good partnership. We've really enjoyed working with you. Um, now, uh, for those of you watching this live, if you have any questions for Christy, anything nutrition related, um, drop them in the comments and we'll make sure that we get to them. Um, I um, do have a couple questions that um, have been brought up to my attention by patients who've been in the office. Um, the first, um, which I know the answer to, but I um, imagine there are a lot of people watching this, Chrissy, who don't know, but can you tell people what's the difference between a registered dietitian and a nutritionist? Sure. Yes, this is a great question. Um, so thanks for asking. So a registered dietitian has some kind of degree in nutrition, either a bachelor degree or a master's degree. And then furthermore, we all do a year long internship for the registered dietitian credential, which ends in a big exam at the end. So it's standardized. We have to do continuing education every year um, and then constantly learning. Whereas if I was just a nutritionist, then that would mean I have some, maybe some degree in nutrition, maybe a certification program. Uh, you cannot do medical nutrition therapy with that credential mm -hmm. and it's not always succinct what that person has gone through education wise. Uh, awesome. Uh, that was definitely one thing that I got asked a lot when I was telling people about this virtual wellness happy hour that we were going to do. Nice. So um, wonderful. Um, now um, one thing that I think a lot of people are um, trying to figure out what to do with the um, stay home, stay safe order and people um, being sheltered in place. Um, can you share with our viewers, what are things that people can buy at the grocery store if they're trying to limit um, just how many times they leave the house? Um, what are good, healthy options for people um, if they're looking to get things that um, won't spoil um, too quickly? Yeah, that's a good question right now. And think about the, the, the common sense, right? We want a quarter of the plate grains, a quarter protein, and then half your plate fruits and vegetables for most meals and snacks if possible. 
So if you think about it, okay, I'm not able to get fresh vegetables every day or every other day like I used to. So can we supplement some of that with frozen um, things that in your pantry? I've been enjoying going through my pantry for once, uh, finding some stuff that I forgot about. And I had brought some of my pantry items that I would think are really good for all different types of meals. So I'll show them as I go. But for breakfast, yeah. rolled oats is a great one. It doesn't spoil in your pantry. These have probably, probably have been in there for a while. Um, if you don't like the regular oatmeal, I usually get fatigued with just like bowls of oatmeal. Then I would recommend mm -hmm. making your own granola. So if you have any nuts and seeds in your um, pantry, like some hemp seeds or walnuts, almonds, there's some great recipes for homemade granola that really cut the sugar down. And some of them I find you cannot use any added sugar at all. So I have a recipe for a banana that you just mash into the granola recipe with vanilla and cinnamon. And that's a really tasty one you can use with yogurt or milk or plain <laughs> on top of things. Um, another one for breakfast, I always keep peanut butter around. It's a great simple protein that you can even add with oatmeal or you can use for sandwiches or on um, celery sticks or something along that line. So that one's a really nice one. I've been getting tortillas. So if you buy like the 30 pack, these last forever for even a family of two or three. So you can make a taco pretty much of anything. Uh, we had, you know, traditional taco. I, I don't do meat, so I did tempeh tacos this week. Then we had tacos with um, like buffalo flavoring. So you can mix up the flavors and still have a taco, so to speak. Um, we did chickpeas and marsala sauce. Those are both canned items you can get at Trader Joe's and then just put them in a taco thing. This is my new favorite salsa from Trader Joe's. Um, I have no affiliation with Trader Joe's whatsoever, but it's a little spicy, but it's made with pepita seeds, which is a pumpkin seed, the inside of them. So this is nice to flavor things that you want, just like a different flavor that you can't nor normally make. If you don't have salsa, but you have canned tomatoes, I think I brought canned tomatoes out here. Um, diced tomatoes is a great one to make a meal out of. So I've made salsa with diced tomatoes. I buy the no salt added so that you can add your own amount of seasoning to them. I think that's a really great way to go with canned products if you can. Otherwise, check out the label and see um, how many grams of sodium there are. I don't know if you guys can see that, but usually I say 20% or more is a lot of sodium. These are per serving, not per can. So um, if it ideally between like five to 10% is a good one for canned items. And then any beans or vegetables, you can actually rinse them to reduce that as well. Uh, so salsa, I combine this actually with peanut butter, garlic, onion, and some ginger. And it's a kind of a offshoot recipe for African peanut stew. You can add broth uh -huh. and make it kind of a soupy form. So that one's nice. So if you kind of Google African peanut stew, it's something of peanut butter with diced tomatoes in them. Um, I'm sure you guys have all some grains around that you can yeah. drum up. So you can make rice or quinoa, um, maybe some that you bought a long time ago that you never actually got to. My mom called and she's like, what do I do with barley? I have all this barley in my cabinet. So it's kind of a fun time to play around with some new foods that maybe you got but never actually used. Um, lentils are a great one if you are trying to do meat-free options. So they're really packed with iron and protein and they're really cheap. So these are the green lentils, but you can do red lentils, which makes more of a curry and they dissolve a little bit more. The green ones hold their shape, so it's about texture. Uh, I usually use red in soups and then the green if I'm going to just do like a side dish with lentils. And you can really add any seasoning to all of these products. So um, if you haven't got into the store to get homemade or uh, salad dressing, but you have some vinegar around, so this is balsamic vinegar, you can mix this with olive oil and then voila, basically have your own dressing. I like to add mustard if you have some mustard around because that helps emulsify it. You can also add garlic powder. You can add some dried spices and herbs to really ramp it up a little bit. Um, my fiance always goes a little, little crazy with his spices when we make our homemade dressing, but 
I prefer just simple. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, when you're thinking about kind of not going to the grocery store so much, again, I would encourage you to do like a freezer sweep just to see if you have anything stored that you could kind of base your meal around. So we did that this week and found some fun fr freezer products. If they're like a packaged thing that maybe you're like, oh, this is probably not the healthiest, maybe you can still have that, but then add some fresh vegetables with it. So for example, I found some cauliflower gnocchi in the freezer. So um, last night I made that up, but then added some fresh kale. You could also do frozen vegetables on the side. Um, and then maybe some other toppings that you have in your cabinet still that adds a little bit more nutrition to your frozen meals. Yeah. That's probably a long-winded answer, but hopefully you get some no, ideas. That was great. Um, I know that um, my husband and I, Jeff, uh, he just recently went through everything, the freezer, nice. uh, our pantry, and yeah, you'd mentioned finding just a bunch of old stuff. We found a lot of stuff in there. I was like, oh, wow, we probably actually mm -hmm. put the grocery store for a long time. Exactly. Um, out stuff from like the top shelf that we have totally forgotten about. So I think that the tips that you shared are fantastic. I know that some of the patients that have come into the office have mentioned they would love to learn um, some things that they can make with some canned um, food items that they have in their pantry. So I think the tips that you shared were awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Now, um, one thing that um, I know, um, I know, at least for myself, I have um, been guilty of this. Maybe some of our viewers have had this um, happen to them. Uh, when you're stuck at home and you're finding it challenging to eat healthy because you're just, you're home and it's easy to snack on mm -hmm. whatever you have around. Um, do you have any good tips for people who are trying to avoid over snacking and really trying to stay healthy and not have to like, eat a whole bag of chips. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm struggling with that as well. So it's definitely a normal occurrence when we're stressed or just next to food items, we tend to crave them more, especially if we can see them. Um, and then stress releases a lot, or sorry, eating these tasty foods releases endorphins, which help calm us down if we are really stressed. So know that it is a chemical reaction. Um, a couple tips that I have in mind is trying to keep on a regular eating schedule. I know people that are working from home, they might, and they might just be snacking all day. And usually that results in eating more, <laughs> especially more calories, higher in fat and sugar type items. Um, mm -hmm. A couple other things you can notice too is uh, are at those meals, are you having enough protein and carbs? So if you are just kind of grabbing things on your way to your next Zoom meeting or your next email that you have to check, sometimes that we crave more foods if we're actually hungry. And if we didn't get enough filling and um, hearty things at the last meal. So notice that you can kind of check back in with the last meal that you had and say, was it really bland? Was it, did I not really uh, sit down and eat it? Was I not mindful around it? Because sometimes that can ramp up cravings later on. I find that especially in the afternoon, if you haven't had uh, a lot of food or if you had too much food, sometimes you feel that sluggish and then you gravitate towards more food to pick up your energy. I have definitely been guilty of that at mm -hmm. times. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, another thing too is uh, when you are at the grocery store to try to not buy some of those temptations that maybe are your weaknesses. It's fine to indulge in them occasionally, but if you feel like they're not really doing you any good to have them in your cabinet, it might be something that you wait for after the pandemic when, you're, when you can have them in your house and not be around them all the time. Yeah. Uh, now, for someone like myself who loves, loves sweets, mm -hmm. uh, do you have any um, suggestions on maybe healthy options to maybe um, lean towards 
if um, we don't want to eat a pint of ice cream, which I have done a couple of times <laughs> in the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, are any, any tips, um, any things to maybe swap out um, in, in place of ice cream or cookies or mm-hmm. things like that? Yeah, there, all these substitutions are probably just going to be less enticing for some of you. So again, if you really just want that ice cream or the brownie, fully enjoy it and really take your time to experience the flavor. So it's not just this mindful passing of binge eating, so to speak. Um, other substitutes you could do for ice cream, do some yogurt, right, with some fruit or even put a little maple syrup on plain yogurt. Um, with the homemade granola that you hopefully already made. Uh, So that can be a great one. I've been having good luck snacking on little oranges. So these are really easy to peel and they're in my bowl in the kitchen. So I see them when I enter the kitchen. So that to me kind of, ooh, an orange. And then I go peel it and kind of forget about the stuff that's hidden in the cabinets. So having some fruit, um, again, when we cleaned out our freezer, tons of frozen fruit that we were like, oh, I didn't know I had all this in here. It kind of gets tucked in the back. So that's another one. I I enjoy like microwaving frozen fruit because then it's more syrupy and a little sweeter. So you could put that over yogurt or um, I just eat them plain with some walnuts. And that's a really nice like sweet snack that maybe it would entice you to not have the other things. I never thought about. Um, yeah, and if any of you are really creative, oh, sorry. If any of you are creative, just homemade uh, lower sugar recipes can be a hit. So um, one that comes up a lot is Oshiglows, I think dot com, and then Minimalist Baker, and those are both like using usually less added sugar to their sweets, and they've tested them because. I always try to cut sugar down and completely ruin every baked good I try to make. So <laughs> definitely use a recipe on that one. <laughs> oh, I, um, in an effort to try to minimize all the ice cream I'm eating, I did get a big thing of medjool dates and I put oh, those yeah. on the counter so that I take those instead of grabbing a spoon and opening up the freezer mm-hmm. to get some ice cream. Um, now one thing I think would be really beneficial for people, um, watching this, if they're trying to boost their immune system to try to stay as healthy as possible right now, um, what are some foods that they can eat, um, that would help boost their immune system? So most of the foods are in your fruits and vegetables. So they're disguised, right, as immune supporting foods. Uh, Some of the key players in our immune system are vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, which usually you can get through supplement majority, um, and zinc. So for vitamin A, it's most of your orange fruits and vegetables, as well as um, like sweet potatoes and things like that. So I think I brought my butternut squash that I found in my pantry from the winter. And as long as it doesn't look moldy or anything, you're welcome to eat these. Um, They do dry out a little bit over time, but they're packed with vitamin A. Uh, Then for vitamin C, I would say that most of your fruits have them in it. So again, if you're trying to minimize your sweet tooth and go for some of the fruit, you're gonna get plenty of vitamin C in all of your fruits. And then if you have a lemon or a lime, you can actually zest the outside and you get quite a bit more vitamin C from the skin as opposed to the inner inner juice part. So double bonus if you're using lime zest or lemon zest. Oh my God. That's awesome. I had no idea. Yeah, definitely. Um, Vitamin D, I usually recommend people supplement all through the winter in general for health. And we know there's some connection between vitamin D and respiratory effects. So people that might have asthma would benefit from having adequate levels of vitamin D on board. And to know that you have to get blood tested, which you're probably not going to do right now (laughs) and go to your doctor. So next time you have a wellness check, it's worth just um, seeing what your levels are and asking for that. 
Otherwise, okay. one to 2,000 IU a day is going to keep your levels where they're at. So that's a good one to start with. Um, if you're like me and forget supplements, you can take a higher dose once a week. And it's qu not quite as good research-wise, um, the outcome for your immune health, but it, at least you get your levels up there. So I take about 5,000 once a week or sometimes twice a week. <laughs> um, and zinc is in a lot of our protein foods. So zinc is really high in oysters if you have some oyster cravings or order from your favorite restaurant. Um, otherwise, a lot of your protein foods like your animal products are gonna have good zinc sources. Uh, there is supplements you can take for all of these things. I do recommend trying to get food first just because your body knows how to utilize them. Um, a lot of your vitamin C pills are over 500 milligrams a serving, and we're no, we know that you pee a lot of that out. So mm -hmm. if you can break up those packets or break up your little chewable tums and see if you can get lower doses more frequently throughout the day. So you're not just wasting it. Good tip. Mm -hmm. Good tip. Um, let's see, you had mentioned a couple of websites, the minimalist baker. What was the other one again? Uh, oh, she glows. Oh, she glows. Yeah. They're kind of vegan preferred, but they do a lot of like, no, no added sugar recipes. So that can be a nice one to start with. They, uh, I have a chia seed pudding video that I'm going to put out hopefully tomorrow, if not next week, and I'll link it to your Facebook page as well. So um, people can, or share it with you guys. Yeah. So you can utilize that. But uh, chia seed pudding is just mixing chia seeds, which are little tiny seeds, kind of like the size of a hemp seed. And when you put them in liquid, they get gelatinous and they form a kind of pudding. So this one is a mocha chocolate chia seed pudding, which is really delicious. And you can use it with berries or bananas or something like that on top. That's it's awesome. pretty low sugar. <laughs> okay. So you'll have to share that um, yeah. with us so that I can replace the chia seed pudding with ice or er, uh, replace yeah. ice cream. <laughs> My fiance did not like the chia seed pudding, but if you're open to textures, it's a great one. It, it does have like the texture of um, like basil seeds. If you've ever had a basil seed drink or they're just like a little bit gummy, you can blend it if that's like totally not your thing. Um, and if you blend it, it will become more the, the same texture, I guess. Cool. Um, I'm going to look real quick to see if we have any comments okay. on this. Again, if any of you have questions for Christy, drop them in the comments. Here's another food product. So I know a lot of people are gravitating towards maybe more alcoholic beverages or sweetened beverages. So I just keep my tea cabinet stocked. This one's a chamomile, vanilla, and manuka honey tea. And it's a great one because chamomile is very calming. So if you are very stressed, it's nice to end the day with an herbal tea that's no caffeine, but can have some effects on the, um, the stress system, basically. Awesome. Yeah, this one's pretty mild in flavor, but it's pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, I don't see any questions. Now, if someone wanted to learn a little bit more um, about you or if they wanted to connect with you, um, what is the best way for um, any of our viewers uh, to connect with you after this? So, yeah, that's a great question. So my website is livingwellalliance.org and that's part of the Pacific Medical Center website. If you wanna email me a specific questions, you can email lwa at uh, at pacmed.org. So those are both ways I will, well, you can read about my programs on the website. And then if you want a specific question answered, I'm always open to hearing more about your um, situation with COVID and how you're coping and any recipes that you've come up with that are really tasty. Cool. And yeah. um, I've uh, I know that um, in the past I've watched some videos. Um, you had mentioned a little earlier in this interview um, some uh, some videos, like the chia seed pudding video. Yeah. Um, I've seen other videos that you have done um, for PacMed. Is that something that people could find on the website, or do you? Guys yeah. Have 
YouTube channel? Most of them are on that website I just said, so livingwellalliance.org. And then if you do go to YouTube, you can search for PacMed um, and we're on YouTube. So all of our videos are in both places. So with the videos, you just have to search Christy and you'll hopefully get, I think I have five now. So they're on meal planning or just quick, easy meals. A lot of them are uh, vegetarian. Some of them have fish in them. So it's a good, good little quick learning. Nice. Yeah. Um, And I think, um, are are there any other things that you want to share with our viewers this evening? Mm. Anything that Ah. maybe you didn't cover that you want to share? Yeah. um, Let me see if I have any more goodies in my thing. (laughs) Um, I guess just being more mindful about your stress level that can really connect to the food that we choose to eat and how we're meal planning and how we're coping. So I know there's a lot of, at least on my um, Instagram page around mindfulness and yoga and just trying to find those self-care things that make you happy and make you calmer can be really helpful when you're struggling with eating, right? So um, this can also be like a really hard time for those that had a previous eating disorder or that are autoimmune compromised or something like that. So just know that there are a lot of tools that you can use to just stay home more and eat out of the pantry because I know you guys all have some food that needs to be eaten. So (laughs) helping with food waste. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. Um, Now, I guess to finish up, um, I always like to ask some lightning round questions. I'm just going to fire a handful of questions at you and you can just share your, I guess the answer that comes to you first. Um, And this will just give our viewers a chance to kind of get to know you outside of um, the professional setting. Um, So when the stay home, stay safe order is lifted, um, where's the first place you plan on going? Ooh, oh, I don't know. (laughs) Uh, I do miss going out to eat. We tried to get like a restaurant that we love takeout and it just wasn't the same eating it at home. Uh, So we we went to shambles that's one of our favorite restaurants which is ironic because it's mostly a meat restaurant and we're both (laughs) me and my fiance are both mostly vegetarian (laughs) so that's something to be said that they are really good with their recipes so probably just like treating ourselves to go out somewhere that we love we were talking about having a party like a covid end of the party kind of thing which i'm sure a lot of you will be doing too I'm a post-COVID party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your favorite food? All the foods. Uh, I hate this question because it just depends on the week. <laughs> so some of my favorites, I really like just eggs in general for breakfast type foods. Um, and then we, I do a lot of uh, recipes that have veganese incorporated into it. So it's basically mayonnaise. So it's not healthy but it's like my guilty pleasure if I mix it with quinoa or rice and then put some nutritional yeast and soy sauce in it. It's like my comfort food. I know it's weird. (laughs) I'll have to try that one. (laughs) Yeah. I love cherries too. So anytime I could get dried or frozen or fresh cherries, I am very happy. (laughs) Mm, Fresh rainier cherries are my favorite. I know. And they're only around so short of time. So it's almost- it's like a blessing and a curse at the same time. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, now we'll go the opposite end of the spectrum. What is your least favorite food? Mm. Hmm. These are very hard for me. <laughs> um, I know I have food that I don't like, but let me think about it. I know, asking a registered dietitian <laughs> food questions. Yeah, I, I really don't like rutabagas. I got them a few times in my CSA box last year and tried all these different methods of cooking them. And I think I just decided that I really don't like rutabaga <laughs> or parsnips. They're kind of similar 
fruity flavor that's kind of bland as well. Yeah. Um, well. yeah I'm trying to think if there's another one that makes me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it on your next question. <laughs> um, then I guess my last question is what beverage have you consumed the most while being sheltered in place? Uh, probably sparkling water, which uh, like today we didn't have any. And I was like, I don't know what to drink. What is water? <laughs> so we've been buying the 12 packs and going through them in like two days. <laughs> So I have a soda ma machine maker, but I've of course left it at work and I haven't been back to work in a month. So yeah. um, that's sad. And then probably secondary to that is I'm finally going through and drinking my wine cellar of cellar and it's not really a wine cellar, but it's our basement that is basically my wine cellar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I've had a couple of subscriptions to wine clubs and I'm finally like drinking them. <laughs> so I don't think that's necessarily a good thing, but it is fun to like try them again and be like, oh yeah, this is why I joined the wine club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, no other questions. So that's pretty much all I got for the lightning round question. I don't know if you want to go back to your least favorite food and add anything. <laughs> to <the> parsley. Um, <laughs> trying to think of something. It will probably come to me like right after. <laughs> as soon as we end this. Yeah. Uh, I'll type box. it in the, <laughs> the box if I think of any. <laughs> oh, well, I am super glad that you took the time to sit down with me and just share all of the wealth and knowledge that you shared with us this evening. Um, I um, again, just want to thank you for doing this. Yeah. Um, probably we need to bring you back on at some point to uh, share some yoga tips. With yeah, yours. I know. I'm doing a mindfulness class for a couple companies next week. And it's been really fun to dive deeper into some of the philosophy of mindfulness and meditation. And it's really ramped up my own practice, which I'm appreciative of. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to have you on again um, soon to do that for yeah. our group. So, well, again, thank you so much for uh, joining us and um, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Stay healthy, everybody. Bye. Bye.